All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Two videos coming out today. Uh, we've got a video, this one you're watching right now is on the Solomon Pulsar Trail, but I also have a video on the Solomon Spectre. These are kind of like brother-sister shoes, one for the road, one for the trail. So if you're interested in the Solomon Pulsar, the road shoe review, uh, check the link out in the description uh, after you watch this one on the Pulsar Trail. I do wanna thank Solomon for sending this shoe out. I have a lot of things I like about this shoe, but also some things that I would change. Uh, and this shoe nearly made it on my feet for the Mohican 100 uh, that I just did a couple weeks ago. Um, but ultimately I decided not to wear this shoe and I'll share why in this video right here. All right, but as always, let's talk about some specs of the shoe first and my size 11.5. The shoe came in at 11.6 ounces. That comes out to 329 grams. The sack height in the heel is 32.6 millimeters and in the forefoot, 26.6 millimeters, giving you a drop of six millimeter. And that is according to Solomon's website and uh, they actually have these two listed as slightly different stack heights although when you put them on your foot they feel almost exactly the same. I think some of that stack height is coming from these lugs which are not super deep but giving you just a little bit extra stack. Uh, compared to the road version. The midsole is featuring Solomon's Energy Surge midsole, which is supposedly the same as in the Ultra Glide, but I have to tell you, these are very different in the way they feel. Uh, the Ultra Glide just feels really, really squishy and a little bit sloppy compared to the Pulsar Trail. I would say that the Energy Surge if these are exactly the same foam, it's implemented much differently in the Pulsar Trail uh, and it feels better in my opinion. And a lot of that I think has to do with this energy blade that they've got in here. The energy blade is a three pronged TPU blade. It's a lot more flexible than you would kind of expect a sort of um, blade to be in a shoe. It's definitely not carbon fiber, um, but that does provide some benefits out on the trail and it will give you a little bit of a more everyday feel in this shoe. My opinion, the implementation of the energy blade is more for stability to give you a little bit of extra pop, but definitely not a performance enhancer in any way. And after all my testing, the foam still feels pretty much like it felt when I got it out of the box. Whereas in the ultra glide, it really flattened out and just sort of felt dead after about 30 miles. The outsole features Solomon's uh, all-terrain contra grip and I didn't have any problems with this although it is suited a little bit better for drier conditions just because the length of the lugs is so short. The upper is a mesh upper and it has some of these uh, overlays which have been a problem for me in the past with Solomon shoes. Just the extensive overlays have provided uh, not the best experience out there on the trails especially when your shoes get wet but uh, they did a good job giving you a little bit of space on each side for the water to escape so I didn't have any problems with water or sweat or rain or anything uh, pooling up in this shoe as I have with other shoes in the past. The upper feel is a familiar Solomon in the toe box and the midfoot. The forefoot is pretty typical for Solomon. Uh, it's not it's not very forgiving up here. Uh, in my testing of this shoe before the race, it just there was a little bit of pressure up here on my big toe and quite a bit of pressure out here on my pinky toe uh, during longer miles, especially going downhill. So that's why I ultimately decided not to wear this shoe. But if you're used to the Solomon fit, you're gonna feel quite at home up here in the toe box. Uh, the heel cup area is extremely plush. Like we're talking a lot of cushion out here. Uh, and that was a really good experience. I felt like the, especially the Achilles counter right here um, was really nice. Like it didn't dig into my Achilles tendon at all. It provided a lot of cushion out here, just a lot of comfort so that I could actually get these laces pretty tight, which speaking of the laces, this is Solomon's quick lace system. So very familiar to any of you out there that have used Solomon's in the past. In my opinion, I really like this a lot. Uh, it never really digs into my the top of my foot. Some people complain about that. I never have any problems with that. The lace garage is fine, uh, in my opinion. It's implemented a little bit better than some of their other shoes. You do have a little bit extra space up here, but if you don't like using the lace garage, you can just tuck it under the laces here and kind of loop it back up. A lot of people do something like this. All right, let's talk about the ride of the Solomon Pulsar Trail, which is what a lot of people are probably gonna be interested in. Speaking of uh, kind of like, where does this fit into Solomon's lineup? up. Uh, the looks of the shoe, it kind of looks like it's going to be more of an all day shoe, but does it actually feel like that? The weight of the shoe is a little bit heavier. Uh, so where does it really fit in? Um, and in my opinion, the midsole is really built for really long days. Uh, and that's why like, I was so close to wearing this for my 100 miler recently because the energy surge midsole 
and the Energy Blade uh, is a really good combination and it felt really, really good under my foot. The Energy Blade is flexible enough for walking that you don't really feel like you're kind of in a racing shoe specifically. You don't, like it feels much more like an everyday trail running shoe. The six millimeter drop is just enough to feel like you're getting a good forward rock. Uh, there's nothing really with this shoe that feels like it's slowing you down. And in my opinion, the plushness of the upper is going to go a long way as far as providing a better experience during maybe an ultra marathon or something like that, uh, or really long days out on the trail. It's just the comfort of this shoe was really, really great. As long as you can fit into the toe box, that's really the only thing that I would warn people about. Uh, but other than that, the performance, the ride, just a really nice experience from the Pulsar Trail. So let's talk about the looks, the appeal of the Salmon Pulsar Trail. Uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, I It's very kind of like duo tone. Um, there's a slight variation of this maroon coming in, in here, but it's pretty much just a black and red shoe. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, I would have maybe done a little bit more red in here, but I think they want to save kind of the flashier colors for their S-Lab line. Uh, this being more of the everyday trail running shoe, I do understand why they colored it the way they did. Um, but in my opinion, I think they could have done better to go a little bit brighter. But as I said earlier in this video, I did get a preview of the spring 2023 lineup from Solomon. And oh my gosh, Solomon is going in a totally new direction with their design of their shoes. And it's really exciting to see. Pulsar Trail is kind of a step in that direction as far as the new branding. Last up, let's talk about the price. Uh, shoe sitting at $130. Uh, is it worth it? Um, in my opinion, if you are a really diehard Solomon fan and you're looking for something that's a good everyday trail shoe, this is gonna be a really, really good option. 130 bucks is a really good price point for this shoe. I think it's gonna last quite a while with the Contra Grip outsole and the Energy Surge midsole. It's feeling much, much better than previous versions of this midsole, so I do think this is gonna get you a couple hundred miles. The upper is very durable. Um, the only thing that I would say as far as is this shoe worth it where you might reconsider is since it's really hot out right now, it's the summertime, the shoe is not great for summer running. Uh, it's going to be much better once fall comes around and then definitely once the winter hits. But if you are already a Solomon fan, this is going to definitely be one that you're going to want to try for your everyday trail runs. And if Solomon shoes have just felt a little bit maybe too pro for you in the past. Uh, that's what Solomon is really focused on, kind of like that higher end kind of racing shoe. Some of that technology and some of that attention to detail does kind of trickle down to the Pulsar Trail. So if you're someone that has not really felt at home in Solomon Trail shoes before, I would definitely try this one out. Uh, it does have kind of the more narrow toe box that we're used to with Solomon's, but it does feature a much more everyday feel. And one that I think is a good direction for Solomon to get more people into the brand. And then if you really like the Pulsar Trail, uh, you might be able to try some of their other shoes that are geared a little bit more towards performance and maybe get Get some benefit out of that. So that's it for my review of the Solomon Pulsar Trail. Definitely an exciting shoe for Solomon and a sign of things to come for the brand. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments down below. I would love to answer them for you. But that's it for this video. Uh, again, if you're interested in the Solomon Spectre review, check the link out in the description. These again are really kind of like brother-sister road trail shoes. But that's it for this video. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.